Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest today on the Gratitude Podcast interview with a good friend of mine, Mariana Veres, that I met a number of years ago down at our favorite haunt, Columbia Tower Club. Mariana, welcome to the podcast. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for asking me. Yes, of course. My favorite word. And we're talking to people, obviously, about what's going on in the world today with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and so forth. And so my first question for you is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with all this madness that's been going on for about three or four weeks now? For us to have a coping mechanism, we have to feel like we have lost something. And uh, you know this about me that I'm extremely busy to begin with. And I just have so much stuff on my plate. I miss my friends, but I just had I just been working through the entire process. I have month and month backlog that I'm actually moving uh, moving forward a little bit to get get done, and and it's interesting because it's called we're calling this social distancing, and I think it's anything but social distancing. I see more my friends than before. I can call it physical distancing because we are not hugging and kissing and in the same room, right. um, but there is no social distancing in a sense of not seeing people, not talking to people. And then that also takes you to the next question that if you understand that how viruses and bacteria work and that how these things are evolving, are we actually living our best selves and are we doing the smartest thing that we can do in our everyday life by hugging and kissing and being just so careless in our interactions? And I think this will be in a lot of people's mind um, as we go forward is that like, how are we coming out from this? Because something like this happens pretty much every hundred years, no. but now we have the media, you know, to, um, grab it. So true. Yeah. Like I'm, 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 I'm not coping with anything. I'm carrying on with my life and I'm just being more conscious about my interaction with my friends. Good, good. Well, you always have a lot of balls to juggle too, which is really part of it, which yeah. is cool. And I think it's interesting you mentioned the social and they're now calling it physical distancing. It makes me wonder though if the handshake will ever be back again. I mean, there's going to be certain things that will come out of this that'll be different. And, and so as we go into a different time like this, I know you're grateful, as you just said right at the outset, but are you, has your gratitude changed at all? Are you grateful for something? What are the top things you're grateful for now, maybe versus before this happened? It's interesting because these things make you a little bit more conscious. Mm -hmm. But doesn't your birthdays and New Year's, for me, every single time, every birthday, every New Year, these are reminders that, okay, another year have passed. Reflect, what do I have? What am I missing? What have I accomplished? And am I, and am I living the best version of myself? You know, like, is, is my life is something that, that I, don't want, I don't like to use the word legacy because... I, most of us should not be that egotistical, but it's more like about, are we touching lives and are we, are we engaging people? And the fact that we are here today doesn't matter to somebody. And if it would be gone, would it mean something? Right, so, right. Yeah. For, sure. For sure. So we mentioned earlier about, you said you're carrying on as usual and have a lot of things. And, and as I say, juggle a lot of balls and so forth. But I'm curious to know any, for somebody who has as much going on, any thoughts or ideas or tips to somebody that might be housebound about what are some of the things I can do that uh, you might be able to advise them on? <laughs> you know, I'm really careful about advising other people how to live their lives. That's why it's called their lives, you know, and and people tell me, oh, I wish I could do what you do. And I'm like, but you can't pull up the stuff I can because I have a personality to back it up and I have to live with the consequences. So I'm studying, I'm building two companies. Uh, there is so much like Baton Estate that planning on remodeling, purchasing materials, doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, engaging, mentoring. That None of this really stops. I'm 95% at home anyway. Um, now I'm 99% at home, you know, I'm going to go to Home Depot later. But other than that, it's the same thing. So um, I know how to fill my time. What's important to you? I have a, actually one, one of the things that I accomplished and I, like, I didn't really accomplish. It was more like I had a conversation with a young man about uh, future life and career and stuff. And, and he's have a little bit of a dead end job early on. And I'm like, 
let me just pass the information down to a couple of coding academies that you could do in the evening when you're not going anywhere. Right. Use your little money that you're earning to put in, uh, put, uh, uh, in good use. And he said that I signed up. Mm. I'm studying. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, I'm like, like, because like, okay, where do you want to be, you know, 30, 40 years from now when you're 50 years old? You know, like, like, how is your life going to be a reverse engineer from back? And I think these are the things that we can do. Just have a kind conversation of what's your goal and, and right. let's just help you get to it. And, you know, you and I have had many conversations over the last number of years. And mm -hmm. I'm always curious when people look back and they think they have a coach, a teacher, a father, a mother, whoever it might be. Do you go back and direct that credit to anybody that is the reason why you're so motivated where maybe it came from? Oh, there's no doubt about that. My parents are extremely motivated and driven people, but that's because they understood that they had to work for everything that they have. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a communist country and they're like, you know what, this we don't want to live mediocre. We want to get somewhere. We want to be financially independent. And they had two jobs, three jobs. Um, they slept two, three hours a night for, for like 20 years. So um, no. and they were, in the meanwhile, they always find time to, you know, to spend with me and then educate themselves and stuff. So like when you grow up looking at that, <laughs> nothing's going to be good enough if you're, you know, if you're not in their footsteps. So I like, and this is a, this is actually a cautionary tale to every parent out there that you are the role model for your children right. or you someone to be modeled after. So step I, it up. That's a great point. I've said, I think I have two sons and managing people in the past and raising two sons. I think it both requires the same exact skill set, and that's setting a great example. And you got to set it for employees. You got to set it for your children. And in most cases, hopefully all cases, they'll follow you, but at least you got a shot at it. So, so last question is, do you have sort of a quote or a philosophy or a mantra or something that kind of de describes your, the way you run your life? I mean, some people say in going through this, this too shall pass or things, but do you have anything that kind of is something that you use as sort of to guide you, if you will? It's, a, it's an interesting thing because I think, these quotes and moods are depending on how are we feeling at that moment. Like, do yeah. you feel like opera or do you feel like jazz? Like what kind of a food you feel like it? And the quotes are also applicable that what do you need at that point? I, I'm a little bit operating from uh, very driven people uh, that are coaches like yourself that inspire us to be the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and like at, the, at this moment, because I'm talking to you and I have coaches in my mind, I think of Tony Robbins who says, raise your standards. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. So like, like the best, no matter what we do, being a friend, being a partner, being a supporter, being a professional, it's all about giving the best version of ourselves to other people. But the only way to do that is if we are growing ourselves. So raise your standard for yourself and you're going to be a better contributor to others. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Well, just as I suspected, many little gems and thoughts that I knew I'd get from you. So thank you so much for being part of that gratitude podcast interview for the pandemic. I'm a big fan of yours. You know that. Like, <laughs> like, like you, every, every single thing that you do and you're saying is to benefit us and to better our lives. And so much of your contributions are just like, I'm looking forward to it first thing in the morning. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. And you know, one of the most basic, you talk about a quote or a, a mantra or something you want to say. I just have always believed if you want to help yourself, help other people. And when people give you the feedback that you've helped them, it's just we want to quantify things. We want to put a price on things. And it's, in fact, priceless when people say that you've changed or helped or directed their life. So thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I appreciate you very much, darling. No, thanks, Mariana. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.